soul bossa nova. That's the theme tune for Free Speech Fridays. Our half hour of honest discussion with decent New Zealanders about the stuff that's been going on in the country this week. And joining me for Free Speech Friday this week, our old mate Leo Malloy out of Auckland. Leo, how are you? Good morning, Sean. How are you? And very well. And back with us after some time of absence, uh, journalist, writer Yvonne Van Dongen, um, who wrote a great piece about me in North and South. Well, it wasn't just about me. That was a bit egotistical, really. How are you, Yvonne? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, Sean. How are you? Ah, oh, great. Looking Love to chatting. And hello to Leo. Yeah. Have you two Good met, Leo? To you, Eva. Have no, you I've never met. Never met. I've done. I've done a wee bit of research. On which way you lean? So I was a bit nervous about coming on. If you're leading too far to the left, <laughs> we might be <laughs> incompatible. But I'm reliably informed. Which way do you think I lean, Leo? Which way well, do you I, think I, I lean? Presume I have a fear of the yeah. media and an innate fear that 97% of them lean to the left and almost on the horizontal, which is a concern to me. Yeah. But I'm told that you're somewhat okay. more moderate than that. So I'm just lost. I'm just, yeah, I don't know where I got, am anymore. Yeah, I'm homeless, politically homeless. I think there's a lot of people out there like that now. Yeah, you well, see. disillusioned and perhaps reconsidering their options might be a better way of looking at it. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to start with a free speech issue, and though you probably wouldn't agree with him or shout him a beer, Nikki Hager has written a lot of books that have got a lot of people reading them. Uh, I wonder if he's got one coming out before this election. They're generally books designed to kick the National Party and argue for a one world communist government. And the way Nikki Hager releases a book is he rings all his lefty journalist friends, they have a thing down at Unity Books. They line up an interview with Kim Hill and uh, and Catherine Ryan and, and <laughs> Paddy Gar. I never get invited to the book launches, and I generally say, well, here's why the book's wrong. But the research is good. He gets hackers to break into other people's computers, and he does some really good stuff journalistically. But he's just been awarded around $60,000 because the NZSIS illegally got his phone records to analyse who he'd been talking to. I think that's a terrible thing for the SIS to do, and i got to say, good on Nicky Hager for pushing this, and his lawyers, Stephen Price and Felix Geiringer, for pushing this point, but I think that's 60 grand an apology is a pretty light sentence for the SIS, Leo. Totally agree. And look, Nicky Hager is not my cup of tea. I think he has a certain elasticity about his truth, his version of the truth. But nonetheless, people like Nicky Hager have a critical role to play in an open democracy. And this is not the first time that he's been a victim of a government agency interfering on this basis. Um, and I agree with you, it's a very light penalty and, a, and a, a peculiar apology, if you look at the wording of it, very peculiar indeed. Uh, and he's not allowed to sue the government now, which is of interest too. But the police, of course, in 2014 were equally guilty of transgressing. They seized his bank yeah. records. So I think he's been a victim on numerous occasions. And as I said, he's not my cup of tea, but he plays an important role in an open society. Um, he said he isn't giving interviews. He's probably going to give an interview to Kim Hill, I would imagine, <laughs> uh, about it all. What do you think, Yvonne? Uh, I mean, I think good on him on a certain level. Good on yeah. him for arguing the point. Yeah, yeah. I've got tremendous admiration for Nicky Hager. I mean, you take him on at your peril. His research is always rock solid. He's really methodical. His conclusions are really often thorough. very dodgy, Yvonne. His research but, but is you, good. No one's ever been able to fight. No one ever been able to poke holes in his research. He's always yeah. um, been able to fight back. He really is solid. And I've been to hear him talk at a um, conference on investigative journalism. I thought he'd be just telling us all off and be kind of righteous and pious. But he's actually very humble and was saying that what he does is not remarkable. He just is thorough. He just, anyone can do it. All the information is out there. He's just doing the jobs that a lot of people should be doing. I think he's incredible. Yeah. All right. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, look, he doesn't, how does he earn money? I think he might earn money because he... Reaches I actually think he's from a very, very police. wealthy family too, Yvonne. I think there's a huge it's amount of family funny. wealth. Yeah. I know people really? who know the family. I, yeah. I haven't heard that. No, yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure Mandy, that his father was involved in the rag trade. Or his grandfather. That's true. He was, he was Austrian's father. I never agree, but I don't... Yeah, think Helen Steins. I think you might find Helen Steins. Okay. Well, I don't think I know Mandy, and I know she's not wealthy. Yeah. Who? When I said there's an elasticity about Nicky's truth, you should go and look at what he wrote about Timberlands on the West Coast if you think that he's totally credible, because he's not always. He's close, but he's not always. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's Nicky Hager, and good on him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good on him. Um, now, let's talk about the one man. This is classic 
I mean, it's a classic clickbait headline story. The parents, the baby needs open heart surgery. And as I have pointed out, they're happy to let a doctor take a knife and slice open their baby's heart. But damned if they're going to let that doctor tell them that they're just being idiots when it comes to the idea of pure or mud blood. Uh, this is driving yeah. me nuts, Yvonne. And, and there are, I'm yeah. running a poll. I'm running a poll on Twitter. And I just want to share this result, this result with you guys because it does. And okay, I recognise they're my Twitter followers, um, largely the people that are voting in this. But I just want to give you the results of the poll I started last night. Um, and we'll be ending in, in just a few hours um, at Sean Plunkett uh, on Twitter, and you can follow me if you like. Um, <laughs> my poll says, who would you trust to save your sick kid's life? Option one, Sue Gray. Option two, Liz Gunn. <laughs> option three, Starship <laughs> Doctors. And option four, the government. 13% of people would trust Sue Gray. 12% would trust Liz Gunn. Thankfully, 72% of people would leave it in the hands of doctors. And 3% of completely delusional people with frontal lobotomy say the government would save their kids' lives. Uh, but yeah. this, uh, I look at Liz Gunn and Sue Gray, I think what they're doing is disgusting, uh, Leo. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, well, Liz Gunn's quite tragic the way she's gone into a downward spiral. I used to be a huge fan of Liz Gunn, but... It is what it is, and who knows what's behind it all. Um, Sue Gray, mischievous in the extreme. I'm amazed the Law Society don't intervene there. But clearly the informed comment here is around the antibody profile of any blood that you're going to infuse. And whatever it is, whether a person's had natural uh, coronavirus infection or had the mRNA technology, the vaccine, they're going to have the same antibody profile. So there is no blood around of what this crowd is describing as pure, what do they call it, without the jab or something? Got some silly name. Pure blood or mud yeah. blood. It's from Harry Potter. Yeah. It's crazy. It's insane. Yeah, so yeah. It's one of those occasions when the High Court's going to have to intervene and overrule to save the baby's life. It's tragic. But this is, of course, a manifestation of the social media. These people read this rubbish on social media. They have these delusional ideas about what constitutes mRNA technology and who's behind it. It's all delusional stuff if you're properly researched or well-educated, but they unfortunately don't... Oh, if you just, you just need some common sense, Leo. Common sense, yeah, or you a know, bit of education. Yeah. Yvonne, how do you feel when you look at this? You're a mum, obviously, and a lot of is being made of the emotion oh. and how this family feel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure their views are genuinely held, but it is tragic, and it's tragic that it ends up in the law courts. Well, I thought, thought at first, oh, they've got 30 people who can donate blood, but it's not that simple once you look into it because the donor pool is too small to eliminate all the risks. And you need to do that. It's not that simple from just transferring blood from an unvaccinated yeah. person Their to argument baby. is that they have a pool of 20 people who are yeah. already approved New Zealand Blood Service blood donors and are of ah. the right blood type. That's their, oh, we've got ah. people standing by. Now, we had a really interesting call yesterday from Graham Sharp, a senior anaesthetist at Wellington Hospital who deals with this stuff a lot. He says the idea that any individual can come along and specify whose blood they want to be transfused yeah. with is illogical because there's nothing to worry about with the vaccine, too logistically just really difficult and expensive and actually risky not yeah. to take blood yeah, from the yeah. blood service. So I thought his arguments were absolutely convincing. And the yeah. argument here seems to be, um, folks, is that these parents have got a right to choose what sort of blood they want to be their baby to be transfused with. And I don't know, that just feels like it's going a bit far. I mean, I could say I want, you know, blood that comes yeah. from, you know, a 35-year-old stud or a black man or someone with a varsity degree, and it's equally stupid and ridiculous, isn't it, folks? But isn't, yes. the, isn't the problem yeah. that if we allow them to prevail here, yeah. it opens the doors for all the lunatics, it sets a precedent, yeah. and it will effectively yeah. um, const constipate the entire health system while they try to find preferred blood for preferred patients. It's and once they try and, and acquiesce to the stupidity of this, and I put it, it's like, it's kind of like the argument about transvestites. You can dress <laughs> up in a skirt and say you're a, you're a woman if you want, but I'm not going to say you're a yeah. woman. I'm not going to share in your delusion. And I, I guess yeah. this family, Liz Gunn, Sue Gray, are asking the medical profession to share in the delusion of vaccinated or unvaccinated blood and that there is any difference. Um, and the, yeah. I guess the medical profession are saying on principle, no, we're not going to do that. If we accept your lunatic idea, yeah. um, we've got to accept everyone's lunatic idea and that would damage 
our job. And know that would damage what we do in saving lives. And that's precisely yeah. my point. Yeah, that's why they have to stand firm here. Yeah, All right. I think they have to as well. All right, maybe we just should yeah. throw them in a room and let off a fog cannon um, and then do the operation while they can't see anything. So fog cannons apparently are the answer to our crime wave, to the drive, what are they called, the ram raids and retail crime. Boy, the government reacted on this because they, they're doing some polling. Uh, but they said there was a shortage of fog cannons. It looks like they might have been fibbing, Yvonne, and they haven't asked for fog cannons and that's all a bit made up. Uh, first up, folks, uh, and Yvonne, I'll start with you. Do you think fog cannons solve our crime problems? Not really. And sometimes uh, the mean part of me thinks, why are we subsidising these businesses? Do we do it to the jewellery stores? Do we do it anywhere else? And really, I mean, that, I don't think that that is the issue. The issue is quite often a whole lot of young people out of control. Although the recent one at the Rose Cottage was 501s, wasn't it? People in their 30s and 40s. Oh, but I don't, I don't know, know we're allowed to say that yet because it's before the courts, but yeah, it was. Oh, I thought that there was, well, it was reported. I heard that. I mean, I didn't Yes, reported. Know whether or not, oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it was a, right. a gang okay. guy got kicked out of Aussie. Let's, let's just go there. Yeah. Um, Leo? I suppose it's yeah. seen to be doing something. Yeah. The government has to be seen to be doing something, but yeah. I doubt that's the answer. Yeah. Leo, fog cannons? They well, it's been a rolling shambles, hasn't it? Poco Williams, what, six million about eight months ago before she got kicked into touch. I don't think Hipkins is interested. They, I see one of the suppliers has pulled out today and said the government strategy is a shambles, doesn't want to be involved. Clearly Jacinda got caught telling pork pies about the availability of the said fog cannons. Um, is it a defensive mechanism of any merit? I doubt it very much. It probably would work at Louis Vuitton or Gucci and Queen Street, but not every corner dairy because... Yeah. The bloke's just going to charge him with a knife and take the till and he's gone in a flash before you can activate anything. So I don't know. Yeah. At least it's something, I suppose, but it's indicative. It's a symptom. And, of course, the underlying cause is the inability of this government to do anything effectively. Yeah. I think Yvonne raises a valid point. If you want to run a dairy, that's the cost of doing business. You pay for your own security. Yeah. Doesn't she have a point, Leo? I mean, no one. Does the oh, government no, subsidise no. Does the government subsidise bouncers in your establishments? Who are part of no, the they don't, but, but, I, but I couldn't subscribe to that. Um, se seriously, we've had wave after wave of different types of crime here in Auckland. You know, we had the issues around lockdown, around Fort Street and Commerce Street, which were dealt with once pressure was put on the police. This issue will be dealt with. The guns, inter-gang warfare has been dealt with once you put police resources in place. You've got to get media profile, shine some light on it, and then the police mobilise the appropriate resources and the matters are resolved. This is a matter that will be resolved. It just takes police resources, it takes government commitment and police resources. Or we just send people off. do they have off. to subsidise? Yeah. Sorry, do they have to subsidise the dairies? Is that, is that really required? Is that what the government's supposed to do? Well, it depends. Look, look my, I, have, I have a degree of sympathy for the people in the dairies. The reality of they are often exposed. Um, Sandringham, where that guy was murdered, sadly, that was an exposed dairy, you know, in a suburban area. There's no real um, foot traffic in particular around to protect them. Two guys plan a, a robbery. It turns nasty and ends up being a murder. I see one Labour spokesperson said they shouldn't stock valuable products like vapes. I mean, in all seriousness, alcohol and vapes, they mentioned, are they out of, they out of stock ice creams? Because some people think ice creams are valuable products. It's a little bit bizarre in my yeah. view when, it, when you can't run a small business securely <coughs> in the country. Yeah. 